Wild Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about a topic I'm surprised I haven't explicitly addressed here yet, and that is through hiking versus section hiking a long distance trail. A through hike is known as more or less an end to end hike when you're completing a long trail all in one push in a single hiking season. Now, the definition of a through hike can vary from trail to trail, but if you were gonna go out on something like the Appalachian Trail and do a through hike, it would typically take four to six months. Although you do have 12 months from the day you start to complete the trail in its entirety, but most people are gonna do it from spring to fall. And although it is more or less known as an end to end hike, you don't have to actually complete it that way. You can go in different directions or split it up in different areas. But the main idea is that you're getting the entire hike done in one season. And of course you can take days off and go into town to resupply. You don't have to take everything with you for a four to six month trip, but you get it all done in one push in one hiking season. Where a section hike is just what it sounds like. You've got one of these longer trails and you're splitting it up into pieces and spreading it out over more time. One of the reasons I wanted to address this topic is I feel like so many people hold through hiking on this pedestal and even people who are section hikers will say things like, well, I'm just a section hiker, but section hiking is a big challenge. And I feel like oftentimes it's sold short. So let's go into the pros and cons of both through hiking and section hiking. First, let's cover logistics. Of course, if you're through hiking or section hiking, you're gonna have to worry about logistics. You've gotta figure out how you're gonna get there, how you're gonna get home, how you're gonna manage everything financially. But with through hiking, that all comes kind of like the trail in this one big chunk. You have to figure out how to put your life on hold for six months. It's more disruptive of the natural flow of everyday life, at least in the society we have now, because it's not normal for somebody to just check out for six months. Some people are lucky enough to have a job that they can put on hold and come back to, but many people aren't fortunate enough to have that option. So there is a bit more gamble with a through hike and possibly more to sacrifice. But on the other end of that, when you're section hiking, I feel like overall you end up with more logistics over time. Of course, it depends on how many times you have to go and section hike the trail to get it all knocked out. But if you go for a weekend at a time or a week at a time, then think about all of the planning that you have to put into that, the travel back and forth for each of those sections. Where with through hiking, you just have travel to the trailhead to start and then travel from the trailhead home. And that's all you have to think about. But with section hiking, depending on how many sections you have, you have two-way travel for each of those sections. But the nice thing is, is you can still keep your job and do this during your vacation time when you get a chance to do it to where you kind of design section hiking around the life you already have built instead of making hiking your life. Considering cost of a through hike versus a section hike, I feel like it's pretty similar to logistics and the way that you take one big blow to the wallet with a through hike. With section hiking, you can split up the cost. So you're not, again, quitting your job for six months and not having any income. You can continue to have income while you go out and you do these sections. But overall, with section hiking, especially if you're breaking it up into a bunch of smaller sections, you'll probably end up paying more in the long run. And it's kind of like paying for something, right? Getting a loan, you can either pay it all at one time cash or you can get a loan and make payments on it along the way. So overall, I think section hiking could likely be more expensive than the through hike, but overall, you know, it just depends on what works best for you. Now let's talk about the physical side of things. When you're a through hacker, you eventually develop what is known as trail legs. And I really feel like this starts happening around week three and then just continues to build from there. I mean, I guess it really starts with day one, but you're putting yourself through this rigorous training regimen for four to six months. And I never felt like the trail got 
easier. I mean, the uphills were always a struggle from day one until the last day, but I did get faster and I had more strength and I felt like I didn't have to take as many breaks, but it didn't go from being really, really hard to super easy. It was always a struggle, but I just got better at it. Of course, when you practice something every day for six months, it's natural that you will get better at it. But poor section hikers, because when they go out there, especially if they're doing shorter trips, they never really get to develop trail legs. So every time they go out there and hit the trail, they get their butts kicked and they go home sore as if they had just started a through hike because basically that's what it is. So I have to say on this one, section hikers really are a little bit tougher, I feel like, than through hikers because they keep going back time and time again, even though they don't really ever get to work through that soreness. Unless, of course, you're going out there for longer periods of time in your sections, like three weeks plus. Something else to consider for the physical side of things is there's probably more potential for a long-term injury with a through hike because people are more likely to push through pain for a longer period of time on a six month hike versus a shorter section hike. Next up is food selection. Through hikers really end up being at the mercy of whatever gas station, grocery store, convenience store is in the area where they hop off a trail to resupply. Now, of course you can send yourself resupply boxes, but like I always ask, do you know what you wanna eat for dinner two months and three days from now? I don't know what I want three days from now. So resupplying as you go on trail, at least for the more populated trails like the AT, PCT, CDT, it makes sense to just resupply in the town rather than buy stuff at home and then pay to mail it to yourself. Of course, if you're on a very restrictive diet and you don't know that these areas are gonna have what you need, then it might make sense to send resupply boxes. But otherwise, and at least for myself, I've always just kind of gone with whatever selection is at the store that I end up resupplying at. And unfortunately, there isn't always a wide array of things to choose from. But section hikers, I have seen a lot of chef type section hikers who have all these little packets of spices and all sorts of dehydrated foods where they've made stuff at home and it was a leftover so they just dehydrated it and now they're out there on trail with their beautiful casserole or something. So this is one area where I definitely think section hiking can be more exciting and rewarding in a way because being able to cook more fancy stuff on trail is kind of like art. Weather is another one of those categories that seems to bode well for section hikers. If you're a through hiker, you've got to be out there come rain, shine, hail. You're just there for it regardless of what it is. But if you're section hiking, you get to maybe plan for a weekend with better weather. If you look and see it's rain and it's like, mm, okay, maybe I'll go sometime next month instead. Also, you get to work around the seasons that are prettiest for the areas that you're gonna be visiting. So maybe the Blue Ridge area you wanna catch when the colors are changing in the fall and it's really beautiful, or you might wanna be in a certain area in spring when you get to see different types of flowers. So I think it's really cool that section hikers get to see an area in its prime and also enjoy it in the best weather possible. Next is gear. If you're a through hiker and you've put down a lot of money for a gear setup and then you go out and hit the trail and it worked fine for a weekend sometimes you can kind of suffer through some mishaps for a short period of time but when you're out there with it for the long haul it can get tough now you can swap out gear as you go along and find different outfitters on the trail or if you can have something sent to yourself on trail but especially with the way the mail is these days you've got to send it a ways ahead of time. But on the flip side of that, if you're going out for a section where you might be out there a week or so, all right, you can stomach whatever the problem is for a week, but you get a chance to upgrade and make changes each time you go out there and learn something new. So with through hiking, I feel like you're stuck with it a little bit longer. And with section hiking, you can kind of slowly upgrade and continue to change your gear as you go along your journey. As far as mental benefits go, I think that through hiking definitely takes the cake on this one. Spending any amount of time in nature can help with depression, anxiety, stress. But I think the more time you spend out there, the better, of 
course within reason. For myself, I found that the longer I was out on my through hike, the more I was able to work through things in my mind that I thought I had already worked through. But you know, some of that stuff that you don't expect to come back up is what resurfaces first. And if there's something you don't want to think about, you're definitely going to have to think about that and work through that first. And I think that that's actually very healthy for us and that we don't allow ourselves the time to process stuff that happens. And we stay so busy with talking to each other on cell phones, whether that's texting or being on social media or listening to a podcast or music. So when you're just sometimes alone with your thoughts and you step away from the matrix, it really allows your mind to do what it's supposed to do in a normal world before we built up the synthetic world around ourselves. So depending again on the length of the section hike, I think the more time you spend out there, the better, but through hikers definitely get that long span of time where hiking becomes more like meditation than a suffer fest physically. One thing that I've often envied about section hiking is you have more of a chance to explore surrounding areas. If you're traveling to and from a place, then you probably have a vehicle with you and you not only get to see that section of trail and the local trail town that through hikers would resupply at, but you also can explore a little bit of a wider berth and check out more historical areas and visit things that I would see advertisement for while I was in a trail town doing a quick resupply and getting back on trail, but that I couldn't really go explore. So not only do you get to explore the nature that a through hiker also explores, but you get to see more on the outside of it. And this also ties into the pace on trail of a through hiker and a section hiker. A through hiker is go, 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 gotta get to the end, gotta finish, I'm in more of a time crunch. Whereas a section hiker can decide that on this section, I'm gonna be out there for five days, but I only wanna do 25 miles. I'm gonna do five miles a day, at least of trail, but now I get to go off on all these little side trails and go see the scenic view that maybe the through hiker blew by because they had to do 25 miles that day. And also you probably get to just kick back and enjoy camp a little bit more. You know, I guess not every section hiker is like that. Some people wanna maximize what they can while they're out there and they do have a fast pace. But I guess as a section hiker, you have more flexibility with that pace. And finally, the end. I'm not done with the video, I'm saying the end of the hike. When you get to the end of a through hike and you have beaten yourself to a pulp, you're so exhausted and, and no amount of sleep can quench your thirst for just actual peaceful rest, not on the ground, in your own bed at home. Um, when you've malnourished yourself, just eating crappy food that you can throw into a pack and live off of, and then you finally get to touch that sign or that marker at the final point of the trail, I cannot explain the feeling to you. It's something that just has to be experienced. So I see why people think that a through hike would be more fulfilling because who stays so steadily driven that they're willing to wreck themselves every single day for six months. But the section hiker who has taken 20 years and all of their vacation time, who has stayed determined year in and year out and dedicated to the dream of completing a trail and then there they are after all that time standing there and they finally get to stand on that last point. And they think about the person they were when they first stepped onto the Appalachian Trail however many years ago and now who they are as they stand there. You tell me which one's more fulfilling. Those are the main differences that I see between through hiking and section hiking. And I think that there are better aspects to each one but I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other. I do really enjoy the adrenaline rush of a through hike. And I know it sounds silly because it's over a six month period, but it is like a constant rush of adrenaline. Am I gonna make it to Canada before the snow comes? So I really like that physical challenge and uh, the emotion that's built up in that six month period of time right before you get to the end. But if you're somebody who has priorities, 
that you can't step away from for six months, that makes perfect sense. Don't think that your experience won't also be exciting and fulfilling. Because in my opinion, if you're getting out in nature and you're crushing goals, then you're already winning. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today. If you can think of any more pros or cons to through hiking and section hiking, feel free to put those in the comments below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.